Hello and welcome to the FC24 Youth Academy Guide. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be fully aware of what to do when it comes to developing your own wonder kits. But before we dive into this guide, a subscription to the channel would be amazing. I've built my YouTube community around Youth Academy career modes, and you are more than welcome to stick around. This year, we'll be doing our very popular Youth Squad Legends series with Wrexham. It's going to be an absolutely amazing story with a whole new cast of heroes. So unlike guides of the past, there are actually new and interesting things regarding youth development and career mode in general that we will touch upon. So even if you were a heavy Youth Academy user in the past, this tutorial still might be of use. The Youth Academy is something that I believe all career mode players should utilize because it's overpowered in two ways. Firstly, you can get incredibly high potential players for cheap. Secondly, it can generate you a lot of money through player sales. Not to mention introducing generator players to your first team squad will of course give your game save so much more personality and uniqueness. We'll start with the basics, and to help with this, I'm removing the Youth Academy players that were initially generated into this example save file. Of course, you don't need to do this. It simply creates a clean slate that allows me to explain the guide in a clear fashion. FC24 will also generate a Youth Scout for you immediately. In the lowest quality teams, this scout will have a dreadful star rating, and will probably have to be replaced straight away. In this example, however, I've used Dortmund, and due to their quality and reputation, they begin with the best scout you could possibly get. One of 5 star experience and 5 star judgement. So Seb Vinter is good enough to stick around. If we go to hire a second scout, you can see what experience and judgement do behind the scenes. Experience scouts bring back more players per monthly report, so think of each player as a ticket to a raffle or a lottery. Well, the more tickets you buy, the greater chance of winning the jackpot. Scouts with great judgement Judgment will find high quality players. Think of that as a boost to your odds of hitting the jackpot per ticket. So to build a conveyor belt of talent that constantly coughs out the next big thing, it's quite important to find scouts that are very competent in both areas. To make best use of the academy, it's strongly recommended to hire scouts in all three slots. If your club has a low budget, you might want to be careful while doing this. Sometimes it's more beneficial to wait for some of your squad's deadwood to be sold before committing to such an investment. Once happy with your scouting team, it's time to send them on their first assignment. From this new screen, you can select the country, the assignment duration, the player type, and finally, a new addition in FC24, the exact position. Yes, you can finally get defensive-minded centre-backs. This is truly a glorious day. The longer the mission's duration, the more expensive it becomes, so once again, please keep an eye on your club's budget. As you might expect, scouts on longer assignments will send back monthly reports for a longer period. But for variation, realism and fun, I'd always suggest that two of your scouts should be moving as frequently as possible, while a designated homegrown scout finds players of the country you play in. But that is a of course up to you. Player types change the base attributes of your scouted players. Goalkeeper is pretty self-explanatory, so we'll gloss over that one. Defensive-minded players have increased defensive awareness, interceptions, stand tackle and slide tackle attributes. Wingers will generate with better pace, agility, balance and crossing attributes. Technically gifted players will have more ball control, dribbling and passing. This is quite similar to the playmaker type, which trades dribbling for more vision and creativity. The attacker type focuses heavily on finishing, but honestly, all the types mentioned are overshadowed by the physically strong player type. This will find you monster athletes that might not possess the initial natural ability, but due to career mode's other mechanics, this blank canvas becomes a serious advantage. I'll talk about those other career mode mechanics later in the more advanced section of the guide. If this is your first ever time doing career mode, please be aware that you're not forced to keep a player in a particular position. So if you scout a centre back and he turns out to be a better midfielder, then you can make that change within the save. Once happy with your choices, send your scouts on their way. These assignments will take exactly one month to bring back their first results. Messages will pop up in your inbox from that point. Now let's get on to what we should be looking for within these reports. Simply put, for every player, there's only one number that you should be seriously focusing on, and that is circled here. This is the maximum potential of the player, and to have an academy of high standard, you should only sign up those that have 90 or above 
showing in this location. This doesn't mean to say that the player will ever reach 90 overall, but they have a greater chance of getting to at least 80. After all, this right here is a potential range, so even though 90 seems needlessly high, it actually turns out to be a good benchmark. If you are strapped for cash and can't sign up all the 90 plus maximum potential players, or if your academy becomes full at any stage, then this next trick might help you decide which people to sign and which ones to bin. You can get a greater understanding of the precise overall and potential with the player's value. £1 million is another good benchmark to have, but please be aware that value is also determined on players' positions, so lower your expectations accordingly for lower value roles such as left back and right back. I'd suggest that you always carry a little bit more money than necessary to avoid having to ditch players in the monthly reports. This is due to the Youth Academy area immediately unveiling their true overalls, so for speed and efficiency try to sign everyone of 90 plus maximum potential and release from your academy accordingly or when you have enough information available to you because the longer you keep a player in the academy the smaller his potential range will become giving you a deeper understanding on future trajectories from this moment on don't be upset if most of your players lose their 90 maximum potential it's very very common and as a benchmark here anyone who dips under 80 maximum potential should be released. One more tip for this basic section. Once a Youth Academy player is promoted, try and loan them out as quickly as possible, unless they're playing frequent football in a successful side. The reasons for this will be explained as we go into the more advanced portion of the video. The dynamic potential system can destroy a youth player if they are not playing consistently in a good team. It's even more damaging in lower divisions as the feature has not been coded properly, so it's vital to loan these players on the fringe of your squad to preserve their original potential. If you have space, I strongly suggest keeping all the players in the youth academy until they ask for a senior contract. Being in the academy also preserves potential. If you can loan a player out, you can make use of FC's long-standing glitch, the loan glitch. Recalling the player can occasionally boost the potential by one or two points. Be vigilant on the player's value whilst you're doing this, however, because it can also negatively affect the player too. In the past, this has saved some of my players from being sold, so it's actually very useful to know. Development plans allow you to fine-tune your players' attributes, and this is where physically strong type really shines because the stat spread usually means the player is average across the board. This leads to the reduction in time it takes to learn a new position, on top of being faster, stronger, and generally taller too. Finally, we'll talk about the new inclusions into FC24. Hiring better coaches and coach management will improve the rate of growth on your players. So if you're running out of money, you might want to focus on certain positions to hire coaches in. There's no point of having a goalkeeper coach if you have no wonder kid goalkeepers, for instance. Training sessions before every match can add very useful play styles temporarily to your youth players. Think of play styles as a more effective replacement to traits. Great in theory until you realise that, although more often in the Youth Academy players in comparison to traits, playstyles still don't appear enough. Playstyle pluses, the upgraded version of playstyles that have even more of an effect in-game, don't show up at all. Which leads me to a very important piece of information that I've been echoing for a few years now. If you can get this game on PC, get the game on PC. What they've added to career mode this year is decent, but it can't mask the underlying flaws the game has. With the PC version of the game and third-party software, you can take control. You can stop the dreaded dynamic potential and add play styles permanently to your players. A whole range of enhancements that we won't go into within this video that make playing career mode 10 times more fun, so consider it. Anyway, I hope that you found all of that useful. Please tell me down in the comments section about the amazing players you find while using this guide, and if you have any trouble, pop it down there too. Hopefully one of the community members can be the answer to your problems. Cheers for watching, take care, bye bye.